let us start lecture 30 and uh, the course is corrosion failures and analysis. We have been discussing pitting corrosion and we started talking on uh, conditions which favor pitting corrosion. Okay. So, we talked two conditions one was uh, um, passivating metals generally they are susceptible to pitting and another was uh, presence of halogen ions let us say chloride ion uh, that leads to uh, serious pitting in case of passivating metals. It can also lead to pitting in case of uh, normal non-passive non-passivating metals, but uh, in case of passivating metal it could be highly localized and it stops when uh, the entire thickness becomes perforated. So, uh, the course is uh, corrosion failures and analysis and lecture 30 and topic we will discuss pitting. pitting corrosion and uh, as we said that two conditions we have already discussed and we will talk about some other conditions. Now, if we just uh, revise what we have done uh, the conditions conditions favoring pitting. If we try to look at those one is definitely passivating metal. or alloys and let us say stainless steel, then nickel based alloys, aluminum alloys, uh, let us say uh, copper alloys. So, for example, this is non passivating metal. So, let us say mild steel. So, it does not get passivated uh, in 3.5 percent NaCl solution, but still we can experience pitting there. So, I have some pictures uh, on that non passivating metals in case of mild steel 0 0.17 percent carbon steel. Uh, I have some uh, pictures I will show you that how passive how pitting happens there. Now, the logic what we have put there is basically we have a surface let us say the entire surface is passivated and because of some reason that could be due to inhomogeneous uh, uh, presence of uh, passivating metal let us say chromium in case of stainless steel uh, or due to uh, some sort of local strain effect or due to uh, presence of some uh, soluble precipitates. So, those cases we can achieve passivity and let us uh, we can achieve uh, breaking of passive layer. Okay. So, so, what are the uh, conditions uh, presence of non homogeneous presence of passivating metal or could be some metal sulphide metal sulphide. So, or could be due to soluble precipitate fine. So, uh, for example, in case of stainless steel chromium could be inhomogeneously present in the weld zone and we can get serious pitting even there could be formation of a kind of uh, complex uh, inclusion containing sulfur uh, manganese sulfur and with addition of chromium uh, those sulfides are soluble sulfides and so th those can get dissolved into the electrolyte and can have pitting local pitting uh, but the rest of the surface could be highly passivated so that means if some pit forms here a small tiny pit forms and rest of the places are passivated so that means that small pit will act as anode and it doesn't get spread it okay it doesn't spread out so since it doesn't spread out since it also provides sufficient area 
for cathodic reaction since uh, the entire passivated area will act as cathode. So, in order to supply electron for those cathodic reactions, uh, serious dissolution along the depth direction happens in that local tiny microscopic pit zone. Okay. So, that is the initiated pit zone and that is where the pit grows very rapidly through the depth direction. So, uh, that is uh, the situation happens and there one galvanic corrosion theory prevails a small anode and large cathode. This is one and second condition pit does not spread in lateral direction Okay, so, that is what in order to meet the requirement of electron for cathodic reaction pit grows pit region dissolves rapidly and grows in depth direction. And interestingly, it stops when it gets perforated. When it leaks. So, that is the situation, these are the two situation which actually lead to serious speed growth along the depth direction in case of passivating metal. Now, that we have discussed and the second point we talked about is presence of chloride, bromide, iodide. So, these are the kind of halogens those will lead to uh, breaking off or damage of passive layer and for example, you have a small surface and it is passivating, there could be possibility the local region, uh, the chloride concentration if it is in chloride based solution, aqueous solution. So, the local region chloride content can go up okay, and that might be the initiation of pit at some location and then once that pit forms, uh, then because of the chloride ion even if it tries to cover up that pit or it tries to pre passivate, okay, but it will not allow it will not be allowed because of the chloride ion presence, chloride, chloride ion presence. And the next steps will be same as these many steps, these many steps. So, the chloride damages passive layer, okay. second part what it does, chloride does not allow repassivation and this is in the local region fine and then third do, and once that pit initiates then the small anode and large cathode would lead to rapid growth. rapid growth along that direction, that direction and in fact, uh, these all those stages first and two, first and two. So, in case of we can say the first and second whatever we have mentioned here. Okay. So, this thing will prevail. Now, another interesting part we have started discussing about, we talked about uh, uh, effect on uh, polarization diagram. So, we had two systems. So, this is log i, this is E, this is E, this is log i. Now, in one case if it is a self passivating metal zone alloy, so the diagram look like this. So, this is my uh, E pit, we write E p fine and uh, uh, if we let us say this is at some percentage of chloride ion concentration C 1, 
Now, if we increase the concentration of C 1, so the uh, graph would change like this. It will move to the right, it will move up this point where the passivation stop that will move up and the entire curve will go to the right. Because of the chloride ion concentration, let us say it is C 2, the entire polarization curve shifts towards right and then this passivating where the passivation happens that particular potential if this is the potential E passive potential that potential will move up. So, it will go there. So, initially it was here it will go up because of the chloride ion concentration increase in chloride ion concentration and then this passive zone will also shift towards right and also this E passive E pit point will also go down and it will break early. So, this becomes my E pit. So, let us say this was, was corresponding to C 1, this is corresponding to C 2. Similarly, if we increase the potential concentration of chloride ion further, so it will move like this, it will move up, the passivation point would be like this and then I can move like this. So, this is the point corresponding to C 3. So, that means, this is E pit C 3 like that the uh, entire graph will in general will move like this. So, that means, the passive zone will shorten means that it does not allow the passivity to achieve. Second thing is it passivates at a later stage of potential if we go from uh, uh, go to the anodic or noble site and at the same time the E pit appears at much lower potential. So, that means, the passive pitting tendency would go up. So, this is in case of active uh, cell passivating metals and alloys. But if we try to look at uh, active passive case metals or alloys giving active passive behavior so that time graph will look like this okay so this is the graph now in that case again the effect would be very clear the graph will move like and then this point will go up this point will also go up and move towards right the entire graph will try to go right so like this so, this one would be like this. So, like that way the entire curve will shift towards right as the concentration of increases. Okay. Uh, so, this is the uh, trend of uh, polarization diagram you would notice in case of uh, passivating metal when there is a there is chloride ion presence in the particular solution. So, now at the same time you could see every time that E pit is actually shifts towards uh, lower potential and it also the total current also shifts towards right. So, that means the passivating passivation becomes difficult. So, now this is about the passivating metal. Now, there are conditions like stagnant condition. Stagnant condition is not good for metal where we do see uh, passivation, uh, do see pitting. Okay. So, for example, uh, if we have noticed that plate what I had shown you, that plate was kept in that particular ferric chloride and NaCl medium uh, for one month for the test what we wanted to do to check uh, the failure of concrete cover that the cover around the river because of the corrosion of river and we wanted to calculate the critical corrosion amount which leads to that particular failure. So, that particular stainless steel cathode was kept for uh, one month time, but the particular solution was not stirred or uh, shaken. So, it was very stable and stagnant and that is what you could see that in one month time the entire stainless steel 18 inch stainless steel got perforated. There are a lot of pits and that pit went through that particular thickness and the thickness was almost about close to 2 millimeter which was quite thick fine. So, uh, that is what happens if we have a stagnant solution, but that particular solution if we churn it 
the problem would not have uh, would not have been that severe. Okay, pit would have formed, but it it will, it will not grow through the thickness. Now, in that regard, uh, stainless steel pump one has to be very careful. Uh, if a stainless steel pump is in operation where all the time the water is getting pumped, uh, circulation happening, uh, pitting tendency, pitting possibility would be less. But if some sometimes those pumps are to be repaired and th those are taken out from the boat and then it was taken to offshore for repair. And there, if it is kept for uh, kept for long time without having any pumping operation, uh, the internal part of that particular pump will get severely pitted. So, that is what the only possible solution could be uh, every every week or ap after a regular interval short interval that pump needs to be used needs to be needs to be used operation should be done. So, that uh, uh, the pitting uh, uh, condition is not favoring the, the pitting condition does not favor the pit to grow. Okay. So, that is what uh, stagnant condition we have to avoid in case of uh, uh, metals which show pitting tendency. Now, uh, this is somewhat also related to uh, if we had noticed crevice corrosion, crevice corrosion it is actually due to stagnancy okay? because there because of the stagnancy we have depleted oxygen content inside crevice and that leads to differential different or simply aerate itself crevice becomes anode and outside large area becomes cathode. Since there we have lot of oxygen, but inside we have less oxygen and that leads to crevice corrosion localized attack. Now, we, if somebody opens a crevice, okay, so you will see lot of pits. Those pits are not pits are actually coming due to crevice. Okay. In case of crevice one advantage is it, it actually shows the signature because uh, when crevice starts it actually grows outward okay. and then uh, you can see the rust is appearing. But in case of pitting it could be microscopic sometimes that pit is covered up by the, uh, by the rust layer which, you, which may not be able to you may not be able to guess by, uh, by looking at it. Okay. So, that case is that is what pit becomes difficult to recognize at least in case of crevice you know that there is a crevice. So, there is a possibility, but in pit can happen on a flat surface and many a times those are so microscopic that nobody can check whether there is a pit is growing or not or pit has actually formed or not. So, that would lead to a situation that when we come to know that pit has happened and the pit has grown the pit might have grown considerably in through the tip direction and that would lead to a serious uh, failure of that particular component. So, that is a pitting becomes more uh, serious. So, now here also in the crevice corrosion somehow if we maintain uh, a flow, okay, so that flow would allow oxygen to reach crevice and that would allow uh, avoidance of air it itself. So, that would prevent crevice to a great extent or control crevice or minimize crevice formation to a great extent. Similar thing happens here when you talk about the mechanism of pitting you would see here also the deaeration happens within the small crevice part uh, sorry pitting part pit part. So, because of the pit so the pit becomes anode due to low oxygen low oxygen. So, that means here also depletion depletion leads to anode and the rest of the part becomes cathode. So, like if I try to let us say there is a uh, surface and there is a small pit if we try to look at uh, cross section wise let us say along that this is a pit and along that we cut it and then see under uh, from this direction to the cross section direction. So, the pit would look like this. So, this is a zoom version of that particular pit. In fact, here oxygen content would go down, go down, but here oxygen content would remain same or if we try to find out the relative this is high. 
okay, this is low, this is high. So, this becomes anode, this becomes cathode, fine. So, now of course, that would lead to a serious galvanic effect as we have discussed large area cathode, small area anode. Now, in apart from that, now uh, let us say uh, uh, we have some deposit, okay. So, a small deposit has happened. So, that deposit would create a small crevice here, fine. So, that crevice can lead to a small pit here, this is a small pit, okay. So, now crevice and pitting both are actually associated when we consider about a, 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 a presence of debris leading to pit. Now, if we have flow there, then debris would not would not stay at one location all the time. Okay, so that when debris will move uh, by, by here and there. Okay, so that would allow every position of that flat section to have equal amount of oxygen. So differential aeration cell formation would be difficult. So pitting can be stopped. So that's what the movement can avoid pitting. Similarly, another way, for example, chloride ion concentration is present. Is present. Let's say because of some uh, possibility that locally chloride ion concentration has gone up. Fine. If it is stagnant, so then that local position can create a pit. Now, if we have a flow in that particular medium, then definitely chloride ion concentration cannot build up at one location. It will get spread it out. Okay. So that possibility is also there. So that's what stagnant condition is very bad about. Uh, on, the, on a system where it shows pitting. So, it allows, it hastens uh, 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 pitting. Okay. So, that is the one example, uh, for example, in, uh, in, a, in a book written by uh, corrosion engineering written by Fontana and Green. Okay. So, that book if you see, there is an example. Okay. So, that example is an acetic ferric chloride solution. Uh, there, they have exposed a stainless steel which is 316 stainless steel. So, uh, refer corrosion engineering by Fontana and Green. So, I am just writing there the last part of the author Fontana and Green. Okay. So, in that book uh, you can see that particular uh, example where 316 they have uh, taken SS and then it was basically acidic. FeCl3 that is the medium they used. Okay. So, that medium uh, if the flow is uh, very high around they have mentioned around uh, 40 feet per second. So, that plate uh, does not uh, has a bit of pitting small small pit, but much less pit high speed or high flow flow rate of the electrolyte, okay, very less pit. Now, there is one more extreme where uh, it is stagnant, okay. In case of stagnant case, uh, so that time, so the picture they have shown is this rectangular one. So, pit happens, small number of pits, but those pits are wide, wide pit. And at the same time, if I look at from the depth wise, so that pit might have most of the pits have gone very deep inside the metal, inside the metal. So, small number of pits, but quite a deep penetration of those pits, but this is in case of stagnant situation. But there is one more situation. Uh, which is intermediate speed. So, there we have small small pits, large number of pits, but their depth is very shallow. Okay. So, this is few feet of uh, uh, we can say uh, uh, flow rate is, is low, not stagnant, but low. So, that case we have quite a large number of pits, but those pits could not grow through the depth direction, but when it is stagnant, it has gone through in the stainless steel 316. This is an example given in Fontana and Green. So, that is what stagnant medium is very bad. Now, coming to other conditions, 
Now, coming to uh, conditions like uh, uh, we have talked about uh, passivating metal, chloride ion presence, stagnant condition. Fourth is we can talk about presence of strong oxidizer, okay. like Fe plus 3, copper plus plus, those are the strong oxidizers compared to iron. Now, now, Fe plus 3 that can presence with the presence of Cl 3, Fe Cl 3. So, it is basically Fe Cl 3 and interestingly Fe Cl 3 is used in the lab scale just to uh, make the corrosion process faster. For example, if somebody wants to see the comparative corrosion behavior of two metals and alloys, then people use uh, uh, Fe Cl 3 inside that particular in the in the particular sodium chloride medium. If we use mainly it is observed in case of st uh, stress corrosion cracking test. For example, if one has to compare the stress corrosion ability uh, between uh, A metal and B metal, uh, if we both expose it to the sea water, the process would be so slow, the corrosion process could be so slow that one has to wait for months and maybe 6 months, 7 months. So, nobody wants to wait that long time uh, in, in, a, in, a, in order to have a comparative behavior. Okay. So, that is what in order to increase the degree of corrosion, people add Fe Cl 3 around 0.1 normal or 3.5 percent in Fe Cl 3 people add okay, in the lab scale. So, that that actually increases the degree of corrosion and why Fe Cl 3 increases the degree of corrosion that is explained with respect, respect to uh, uh, mixed potential theory. For example, if we recall that mixed potential theory, it says that this is log i current density and this is polar voltage. Now, let us say some metal is corroding and let us say it is corroding in acidic medium. So, this is hydrogen evolution reaction is basically your cathodic reaction. So, now this is my corrosion rate I cor and this is the metal dissolving, metal dissolving. Now, if we have Fe Cl 3, so Fe Cl 3 in case of Fe Cl 3, Fe Cl 3 actually has a very high uh, let us say depending on the concentration of Fe Cl 3, uh, Fe plus 3, uh, the potential would be very high compared to hydrogen and then it will, it will also have its own reduction process and the reduction process is Fe 3 plus plus electron equal to Fe plus 2. So, this reduction process happen if there the concentration is 1 mole per liter. So, that time uh, uh, the if the activity is maintained at 1, so then the potential becomes in E naught which is the standard reduction potential plus 3 Fe plus 2, it becomes 0 0.77 volt fine. So, now uh, if the concentration of these two species will be less, this voltage will also drop down okay, because you have to use uh, reduction this uh, Nernst equation which is E 0 plus R T. 2 f and here it is 1 f because 1 electron is in involved L n concentration of ox which is F e 3 plus and concentration of red which is reductant which is F e plus 2. So, now if these values are less automatically this value would also change this value would remain same right. So, like that way this potential would be much higher compared to hydrogen evolution reaction potential. So, this is E 0. Yeah, or E equilibrium you can say and this is the E equilibrium, E equilibrium for F e plus 3 going to F e plus 2. So, now that one will also come as per its own uh, polarization curve, activation polarization line uh, as per the as per the Tafel uh, equation and then at this point when it reaches to this particular potential, it will add up all the cathodic reactions and then it will move there like this fine. So, this this particular portion is like this. So, this particular part is addition of and plus H plus plus E equal to H. So, these two cathodic reactions are added because as per the mixed potential theory, the mixed potential is, will be achieved at a point where both the total rate of cathodic reaction would be equal to total rate of anodic reactions. So, now this is the point now which is the 
point which is the mix potential now E mix prime and let us say previously when there was no efficient F e plus 3 this was E mix. So, now you could see that after addition of F e plus 3 our corrosion potential has gone up or the E mix has gone up, but the corrosion rate has actually uh, increases uh, have actually increased to a great extent because it is a log scale. So, now this is I core when F e plus 3 is present would be much higher than I core when no F e plus 3. So, now you could understand why F e C L 3 is F e C L 3 is added for for making it uh, a conducive atmosphere for having a very high degree of corrosion. So, those oxidizers if they are present that can actually prevent uh, passivation as well as that can induce uh, pitting. Similarly, copper also would act like that way. For example, if we have a tank, if we have a tank and that tank you have a uh, this is uh, outlet, this is outlet and this is the inlet, inlet pipe is, is copper made let us say copper pipe. So, that copper pipe can lead some of the copper ions to go in and that copper ions can have a cathodic reaction C u plus 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 2 e equal to C u. So, that copper deposit would have oops somewhere it has gone. Okay. So, the copper deposit would happen and this copper a small uh, bead would happen. So, that bead would now act as a source for or the surface for cathodic reaction, cathodic reaction and that would hold that cathodic reaction 2 H 2 O plus 4 E equal to 4 O H minus. So, this is the cathodic reaction happening before, but now locally you have a strong cathode where this reaction would happen and there could be a pit formation here. So, those are the kind of situations because of the presence of strong oxidizer we do have pitting on a particular metal surface. So, a uh, uh, couple of more conditions are there we will discuss in our next lecture. So, till then let us stop here. Thank you.